I'm Rick Kaler. Thanks for joining me. Not long ago, the Rapid City Journal did an excellent two-part series on the 1986 sale leaseback by the state of South Dakota of many of its government buildings. The proceeds of the sale leaseback put a total of $29 million into infrastructure improvements over several years with no cost at all to taxpayers. It was described by then-Governor Bill Janklow as making money out of nothing. While the transaction was viewed by many people as confusing, it really isn't that difficult to understand. Sale leasebacks have been a tool used by owners of real estate for decades, and the concept isn't terribly complicated. Let me explain it. So basically, a sale leaseback is a transaction where an owner of a property sells it to a buyer then immediately leases the property back from the buyer. The seller, rather than moving out, stays in the building and rents the premises from the, from the new owner. The seller ends up with cash and gets to stay in the building for the term of the lease, becoming a renter. The trade-off is that the seller now becomes the tenant and the buyer ends up with the building and a tenant, typically a long-term tenant, and income in the form of rent. So why would a seller and a buyer want to do a sale leaseback? Well, there are many potential advantages and disadvantages on both sides. One reason is that the seller has a greater need for cash than owning the real estate. Perhaps they can use the cash in their business. Perhaps they can purchase a different asset at a significant discount, thus receiving a higher return than owning the real estate. Selling may also be a way to lock in high real estate values in anticipation of a real estate crash. For the buyer, the purchase may serve as an investment opportunity that comes with a tenant already in place, eliminating the risk of letting a building set vacant for months or years while searching for a new tenant. So this is basically what the state of South Dakota did. It sold 118 buildings to investors who then leased back the buildings to the state under an agreement where the state was obligated to buy the buildings back in 30 years. This is called a lease purchase, where the buyer has either an option or an obligation to purchase the property during the term or at the end of the, uh, the, the lease uh, period. The state invested just enough cash from the sale of the, of the buildings to produce enough return to pay all the rent on the buildings, uh, enough return annually to pay, pay that rent for 30 years, and then fund the repurchase of the buildings. When that was said and done, the state had 12 million left over from the sale. The main factor that made this work was that the state was able to invest the money at a higher return than the cost of leasing back the property. Had the cost of leasing back been greater than the return the state could have received on the sale proceeds, this wouldn't have worked as the, as the state would have lost money. Additional benefits a, a seller may realize from a sale lease back are tax advantages. For one thing, lease payments are 100% deductible. Or perhaps a seller may have large business losses that could be used to offset a large gain from selling their real estate. It's a way to benefit from the unfortunate loss at the same time gaining money to put back into the business. The funds can be used for any purpose the business may have, including investing the proceeds to fund a lease purchase, just like South Dakota did. While the details of a particular sale leaseback may be complex, the basic purpose is straightforward. 
It's a way to use real estate uh, as a way of providing business benefits to both parties. Thanks for joining me.